good morning my name is Chris and today I want to talk about the awful feeling you get when you first quit in smoking and you just feel so unbelievably tired like all the time last week we were outside by the water's edge talking about those times that happen for some people when quitting smoking actually causes you insomnia you're up all night and no matter what you can't sleep that seems to happen to a lot of people that have commented on some of the videos that I've made in the past but for me and for a number of people the opposite actually happens when you just you feel like the only thing you want to do is sleep you might sleep like 10 hours a night and wake up and go oh my goodness that sleep was so exhausting I need a nap <laughs> or you wake up and you try and get through the day and it just feels like just this constant sense of drowsiness of I always call it like a mental fog like you just can't focus properly you can't think straight you just feel like I just need to lie down the best way I could describe it when I was quitting smoking it was more like you know when you have a big dinner and afterwards you're like oh I'm stuffed <laughs> and your body is processing all that food you just feel drained you just want to lie back like, oh. <laughs> it's like that feeling but all the time and there are of course some people who feel both they get the insomnia and then they're awake all night and they're quite naturally because they haven't slept they're tired all through the day but then there are those who sleep but like just can't get enough sleep just constantly feel like they need to nap like they just can't wake up properly the good news is that this feeling of being constantly tired when you are quitting smoking does pass and in the grand scheme of things it passes relatively quickly within a few weeks the most I've ever heard is like a month somebody going through a month of not being able to sleep properly and then things readjust your sleep patterns become normalized you start enjoying a beautiful peaceful night's sleep better than you ever have before so that's great okay that's great news surely that this will not last forever it will pass the question then is what do you do until that time oh my goodness you just cannot live your life feeling this tired all the time so today we're going to first look at why you're so tired and then look at just some of the things you can do to just feel a little bit more alert a little bit more alive a little bit more focused whilst you're going through the, the withdrawal process of quitting smoking shall we do this let's go now of course the biggest question that you likely have is why is this happening when I quit smoking everybody told me how much better things were going to get everybody told me that I was going to get fitter healthier happier and that I was going to have an abundance of energy that I was going to have more energy than I ever had in my whole life but it's not happening instead the opposite is happening <laughs> I certainly don't feel fitter I certainly don't feel healthier I have less energy than I think I've probably ever had in my life and oh my goodness it is making me miserable why is this happening why did everybody promise me that I feel great when I quit smoking and now I just feel lousy I've done a lot of research on this and found all kinds of fascinating theories and explanations and ideas as to why this happens. One of the, the explanations that made the most sense to me and that I just found just blew my mind. There is a chemical in the brain that regulates our level of awakeness, our level of focus, our level of alertness during the day. It goes through us helps us to stay awake and focused and, and chat like we're chatting now there is also something in a cigarette it's not the same chemical but it mimics the actions of that chemical so it mimics 
this thing that keeps us awake. So we smoke and that and smoking ends up keeping us awake, alert and focus. After a while, the brain starts to say, well hold on a minute, the body's getting this chemical from an external source, therefore I don't need to make it anymore. So the brain just stops its supply of this chemical, stops producing this chemical altogether and we get the, the chemical that keeps us awake and alert and focused from cigarettes. Then we take cigarettes out of the equation so we no longer have those keeping us awake, alert, alert, awake and focused. Meanwhile the brain is still isn't producing this chemical so we have nothing in us to keep us awake, awake and focused. So we're just mm. completely exhausted. <laughs> the good news and when it comes to quitting smoking, there is always good news. In this case, the good news is that after a short while, after days, certainly after weeks, the brain starts to go, hold on a minute. This chemical that we depend on to keep us awake and focused isn't coming from anywhere else. I better start making it again. So it makes the chemical. After a short while, we readjust, we sleep better, we wake up, we have infinitely more energy. I spoke in last week's video, the insomnia video, about why it is that when we quit smoking and we get past the withdrawal stages, we do have much more energy. I won't waste time today going through that again, but if you do want that explanation go and check out that video i'll put links up at the top to the side down below wherever you get your youtube links you can go and read that if you want to of all the theories and all the ideas and all the explanations that you come across as to why quitting smoking makes you so exhausted they all come down to, to one key thing which is that withdrawing from nicotine addiction and recovering from all the abuse that we put ourselves through as smokers and let's not you know let's not look at this through rose tinted glasses smoking is a form of self abuse so recovering from all that abuse and recovering from the withdrawal process of nicotine is exhausting you know yourself when you are craving for a cigarette it takes a great amount of mental energy to say no I'm not going to give in to temptation I'm not going to smoke sometimes those cravings might manifest themselves physically we might get that thing where our muscles start to tense and we get anxiety and we're like I just want to smoke all of that going on in our bodies tires us out it takes a lot of energy and tires us out plus now that we are no longer bombarding our bodies with the pollutions of cigarettes the body goes finally finally I can start getting rid of all this crap that is it that, that, that that has gone into the body. I can finally start coughing up junk. I can finally start releasing it. I've spoken in other videos about sometimes I used to imagine the physical withdrawal symptoms were, were all the gunk physically leaving my body, like rising through my pores and out into the atmosphere. So all that mental energy and all that physical energy of withdrawing, plus the huge amount of activity the body needs to make to finally start clearing all that gunk from us it just leaves us exhausting exhausted we just want to sleep all the time or if we don't necessarily want to sleep all the time we just feel like we can't quite wake up like we're zombieing our way through through life and you may reach a point where you think I am zombieing through this day I just feel uh, I'm just not even with it I might as well smoke I might smoke to get that chemical that's going to keep me alert and awake 
this is where I have to, to, to say, look, it is not worth it because all this passes. And then all you're going to do is smoke and then make yourself feel bad. And then you're going to try and quit again somewhere down the line. And then you're going to have to go through this whole process again. What I would urge you to do, I can't tell you what to do, but what I could very strongly urge you to do is to hold on. Even if that means holding on for dear life. Because this passes, it does not last. And on the other side all this pain and turmoil is freedom, is energy, is feeling awake and alive and able to make the most of life in a way that you have never done before. Sure, it's all well and good me urging you not to smoke when you're feeling so exhausted, even though you think smoking might just be the thing that gives you that little bit of alertness. It's all well and good me saying, hold on, this will pass. But that only creates another question, which is what am I supposed to do until then? Chris, I can't just hold on. I have to be awake. I've got a family to look after. I've got jobs to go to. I've got commitments. I can't do them if I'm feeling this terrible. What can I do until then? What I'm about to share with you now are a few things that helped me get through my sleep troubles when I was, when I hit that mental fog, when I was feeling drowsy all the time. And the first is simply not to fight it. If you feel like you need to lie down, lie down. If you feel like you need to take a nap, take a nap. If you th feel like you need to go to bed at 7pm and don't wake up again until the following morning. Go to bed early and get up late. We spend too much of our time as smokers being hard on ourselves. We spend too much time as smokers physically and mentally abusing ourselves with the addiction to smoking. So when we finally quit, it is time to be kind to ourselves. The fact that we start feeling exhausted, the fact that we start feeling drowsy, doesn't mean there is anything wrong with us. It means we are recovering from years of abuse. It means we are recovering from something huge and it is a colossal effort. It's a testament to, to the amazing way that our bodies are built, that it can even recover from this. There is nothing wrong with you. You don't have to fight it. You don't have to think, well, I need to be tough and I need to be strong and I just need to, to block it out and go forward regardless. If you want to do that, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But if you also feel like, look, I just need to lie down. Just lie down. Nothing bad is going to happen to you. Obviously, I'm not saying that if you work in an office or in a store or in a factory or wherever it may be, that you can just go, do you know what? I've got commitments, I've got jobs, sack the lot of it, I'm taking a nap. <laughs> Don't lose your job over this. You get home at the end of the day, you feel tired. Don't force yourselves to start doing a thousand different chores and a thousand different tasks and going to the gym and all this, although going to the gym is going to helpful. That was a bad example. Don't force yourself to start doing thousands of things. Put your feet up, watch a movie, play a game, do whatever you need to do to relax. Allow your body to go through what it needs to go through in order to recover. Again, like I said, I used to imagine that if I was so tired, I used to physically, you know, I would close my eyes, I would visualize, okay, I'm tired now, but that's because all this stuff is happening that is making me better. I'm going through a transformation, pro transformation process and it is making me better. Again, that's all well and good, but you still have to, in most cases, get up and attend to your responsibilities. So how can you try and get some of that alertness back? It all comes down to taking better care of your body of making sure you're giving it the right fuel, 
giving yourself the right, you know, the, a fighting chance of being awake and alert. So that might mean less caffeine. And again, yes, caffeine might give you that, that little spike, but it also gives you that come down afterwards that just aids to your fatigue. So you might want to switch the caffeine for like herbal teas, especially whether you drink caffeine or not, make sure that you also get plenty of water that you stay hydrated. Do not underestimate the power of a simple glass of water in making you feel more energized and alert. Think about your diet too. If you're eating a lot of fatty stuff that is, that is full of carbs, it's just going to make you tired afterwards. I talked before about that feeling when you have a huge dinner and then you just feel like, oh my goodness, I just need to lie down. If you're eating foods that are like that, then it's only going to add to your level fatigue. Try swapping for vegetables, you know, for, for whole foods. Get sugars from fruit. Again, it is tempting to think I'll have some sugar and I'll have a sugar high and I'll be able to get through what I need to get through. But again, after every high, there is a low. So if you're eating lots of processed sugars, you're only gonna feel crap afterwards. And plus, there's been all kinds of research linking processed sugars, uh, you know, sweets, candies, soda, things like that, to, to depression. And quitting smoking is hard enough, and it does take a mental toll on you. So don't do anything that is going to, to increase the likelihood of you feeling poor. Do everything you can to make yourself feel good. So instead of of candies, of sweets, of chocolate, of soda, you know, go for fruit. Fruit has a natural sugar in it that does make you genuinely feel good. You can also step outside once in a while. Last week we were out by the, the water's edge when I did my video. I'm planning to do more videos outside because it is just, it is where I feel at my best. Breathing in lungfuls of fresh air, sun shining, the water lapping on the, on the shore. That fresh air, that, that natural sunshine can work wonders for making you feel more awake and alert and alive. Even if you only take a short walk around the block. I'm quite lucky I have a big nature reserve like a stone throw from my house so I can go and spend a lot of time there. I get on my mountain bike, I go out and ride. And I often find, I do this even now, there are some times, you know, when you get that, I always call it the post-lunch slump. You eat lunch and then you just feel a bit drowsy. Instead of taking a nap, I'll get on my bike and go for a ride in the sunshine, get the fresh air. And I just, and I don't, when I get back, I no longer feel like I need to nap. I feel more alert, awake and energized. That brings me to my next point. Do some exercise. I'm not saying you have to get a bike and cycle for a thousand miles. I'm not saying you have to get a gym membership. Although both of those things are going to help you. Again, a simple walk around the block. A simple jog. Go and kick a soccer ball or football around with your friends for an hour. Go play tennis. Do something active. That activity, that exercise, will boost all the happy chemicals in your brain. It'll make you feel good. And when you're feeling good, this thing of feeling tired won't be as big of a deal because you'll be in a good place. And plus, the, the fatigue won't be as strong because those happy chemicals also make you feel energized and alert and awake. And again, the biggest thing is to not be hard on yourself. If I, could only, if I could only say one thing in this video, if I could only say one thing in all of my videos, it would be that when you are quitting smoking, do not be hard on yourself. You already were hard enough on yourself by putting all that crap into your body. Now is the time 
to relax. See this, see your relaxing time, make it fun, make it a reward for quitting smoking. Do you know what, I, I'm going through this huge thing, so I'm gonna treat myself. I'm gonna have a movie night, I'm gonna put my feet up, I'm just gonna sit back, I'm just gonna chill. And if I fall asleep, I fall asleep. Because sleeping gives my body that chance to get, restore its energy so that I can fight off all the crap that I've put in my body and I can get rid of it. That's what it comes down to. Relax. This will pass. And please, the answer, the answer to feeling tired is not to smoke. Because if you smoke, like I say, you're going to have to go through this again. We don't want that, do we? Thank you very much for watching this video. I do hope you have found it helpful. If you have found it helpful, likes, shares and comments are always appreciated. As I always say, my favourite part of making YouTube videos is hearing from you about how well you're doing on your quit journey. I would love very much to hear from you. For more videos, please do subscribe. I make at least one video a week talking about quitting smoking, addictions and related subjects. Thank you again for watching. I will see you next time.